I'm Peter Collins. I'm the owner-operator of the iconic Secret Cafe. It's actually been a bar since the 60s, and uh, there's a brief history of uh, what I know it as the Nautilus uh, when I came here as a young adult. That is the original Nautilus, which is the same building, just, uh, you know, the uh, windows. Yeah. That porthole is now big windows. Uh, there's a lot of, like, cookie-cutter bars that, you know, put up random pictures that everybody puts up in a bar and so everything here kind of has a story maybe i'm the only one who knows some of it but uh it's basically everything from the 1980s sea grape there are some things that are nautilus uh there's some like you know very old beer signs and stuff that's those those are from the nautilus days i actually found those when i was doing some renovations i took out some walls in the back um you know some sheetrock and they were there and I had them refurbished. The Miller Light sign. This model here is actually Bob Barker. No way. Yeah. So uh, that was cow. before he became, was the game show host. What did he do, The Price is Right? Yeah. yeah. No way. That model. Yeah, yeah. Surfside was an, another bar that was very popular in Fairfield on the water. That actually came up from the ground during Sandy. And one of the regulars, Got it, cleaned it up, and that's the original, uh, it's from the Surfside, which no longer exists. This is me. I have, uh, I mean, my wife said, either get rid of your tchotchkes or put them somewhere. So <laughs> I uh, have the most bizarre collection of whatever, some nautical stuff. So that's what all that uh, stuff is up top. Yeah. Right? Now I know. Your tchotchkes. That wrangled to get it. And ultimately was able to purchase it. I didn't want to change anything other than cleaning it up. Things that would, you know, improve it, but not take the, uh, the natural, uh, you know, flavor of the sea grape away. So this is like my, uh, this is my office. Um, I'm a huge hockey fan. Uh, I used to own a bar with Mark Messier and Brian Leach called the Auction House. So what made that even better is that when they won the cup, um, they brought the cup, went straight from the ice to our bar for like two days. I don't remember the second day, uh, <laughs> but they said I had fun. Uh, so that's me drinking out of the cup. That's Mike Keenan, um, the coach of the New York Rangers for the, uh, Stanley cup. It's a very dear friend of mine, Ron Greshner as a kid playing for the Rangers. I like this shot because it shows the old garden. My bar, the gaslight, one of my former bosses before he was an actor was Jimmy Gandolfini from The Sopranos. He uh, was a uh, investor in my club down there. Uh, this is an interesting Budweiser. I love it because uh, this is the states. This is Nautilus too. It's um, kind of very 60s, 70s Mad Men type uh, shot. But they did this Budweiser location it happens to be Jennings Beach. Amazing that I was able to, you know, it was still here and I had it, I had it refurbished. The, this is from the 90s and that is the Clam Jam. This stage was named after my son's guitar teacher who's played here about a hundred times. At 17, left Staples High School. He's like a prodigy guitarist. He left at 17 to play with Buddy Miles, which was, uh, and he opened uh, a lot of shows for Jimi Hendrix. He actually played Jimi's funeral. There was so much history here with him playing and make, you know helping the music scene. Uh, we named the stage after him, and uh, which makes my son happy because he learned uh, a lot of guitar from him. And that's him here sitting on the stage. The story with this, this is called The Ceiling of Shame. So when we, take somebody's fake ID. The good thing is, is that when they finally become of age, they can always come here and say, that was my fake ID. That is hysterical. Oh, you know. And music is uh, a very big part of it. I have uh, a resident DJ 
DJ PPG. Big motherfucking shout out to Mary Collins for her first gynecologist appointment. You go! Let's get blanked up. Let's get blanked up. He knows how I did my DJs in my Manhattan nightclubs. It's very different here. Here you need to engage with your clientele, which is the students, whether it be shout outs, birthdays, giving kudos to like the sports team, the volleyball team. So I love the shout outs. I mean, I love all that stuff. I mean, first time actually doing this. I've never got, uh, worked at a college bar or this, did this type of venue. I've been doing mostly private, private gigs. So private gigs could be anything from like weddings to graduation parties, to birthday parties, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, private events and stuff like that, corporate private events. So I never did anything on this level. This is a first <laughs> event. Peter, I think it was like you were coming in here on your own, you know, just... My off night. He liked, uh, what was it, what would you order religiously on the menu? It was, uh, it was that, that cheeseburger. That yeah. Yeah, the cheeseburger. Yeah, the, uh, the California burger. The California burger, yes. yes. Uh, and then we started talking because we have like a New York connection. And uh, he said, let's, you know, bring in the energy with the DJs. And I've had DJs... Uh, since the beginning, but they would just come in, play their set. Peter kind of, we kind of just said, let's let's do it. Every single night when I'm DJing at the booth, Peter G, don't you remember me? I used to take your classes when you're when I was a freshman or when I was a sophomore. I love your classes. Now they come here, right? So it's a four year relationship that I have with all these students. That cannot be duplicated or replaced. I don't want to be the prototypical older person who's always proper, you know, everything's got to be clean and stuff like that. I want to say the raunchiest stuff so everybody in the C-grade stops what they're doing and goes, did Peter G just say that? Yes. I'll be 58. Everybody in my age range, I get it. You know, you're setting your ways, you know, you don't like change. Like most people over my age don't like change. Uh, you're living a different type of lifestyle. I never got married, I didn't have kids, choice. I love this. I love DJing. I love being the conductor. I love putting on a show. And for me to do that, you know, I I love going out Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. I didn't want to give that up. So I, I love being a DJ. I just it thoroughly enjoy it. The formula is easy. When you have a true passion, and love for what you do, it's easy. You because you look forward to it. Here is something I look forward to. I'm excited. I can't wait to teach class. Like tonight, I got a class. I'm doing my birthday ride. I can't wait. I can't go around town with somebody's driving past and say, "Yo, Peter Cheater, Peter G, you mother," or "Let's get fucked up. Let's get fucked up." Like here, the seat right. It could be any time during the night. I'll start it because they'll know. Like I'll find a beat and I'll go. Let's get and then all of a sudden, everybody's saying, let's get fucked up, let's get fucked up. I look forward to that. What bar are you gonna go with that's gonna happen? Nowhere. Staff is very important. I mean, in every, I always look at this business as like a, a, a wheel, a bicycle wheel with spokes, and each one of those, to keep that wheel moving and in, in line, you need the spokes. I never say anybody works for me, I say we work uh, together, you know, just like, I kind of keep it where everybody from my cook to the bar back to the porter, they're a huge part of, of keeping this wheel in motion. And I came to Pete and asked him for a job. He said no. He told me. Yeah, he said no. You and Eddie both. Because he said you don't want to work where you play. Oh, right. Yeah. It's so I was so persistent. I went again and asked Eddie. He said no again. Then I came back again, and he finally was like, all right, be here on a Tuesday. The only bar back here, the other one didn't show up, got my ass handed to me. It's a family. This is a family type of business. We're all family. Everybody knows me, and I know everybody. And, and that's what I wanted to do uniquely different here than what I can't do anywhere else. What makes this special, it really belongs to the seniors. And it's like uh, rites of passage. It's really their bar. It's a senior's bar. And it's to make their year, their last year in college, probably the most memorable.
you know, other places have opened, but um, it doesn't really have the attraction and the history that this has because it's really uh, part of the whole Fairfield View experience. This is for the seniors. It makes the Seagrave so significantly different than any other place around here. So you can go to any of the local spots who are like a restaurant and then they have after hours and they have a DJ and stuff. This is a legit college bar, period. So the thing about Peter and I, we're getting older, but Seagrave, they're always 21 and 22. So it's kind of weird as I get older, there's never, everybody's always 21 and 22 because each class that comes in. So it's kind of uh, I mean, a little that, depressing, but I mean, you know, we get to, not at keeps all. us alive. We, we, we vintage like fine wine. We just keep getting better and improved. <laughs> yeah. You know, all that energy from the youth just keeps us younger and younger and younger. Right. So actually there's an upside to that. Yep. The secret is very symbolic and it's a college bar your senior year and it's until you're a senior, you realize how quickly time goes by. So we wouldn't deny anyone, any college kid, to walk through those bars to experience the great life, the great vibes. So whether you're from Fairfield U or you're from Yukon or wherever, we welcome everybody through those doors. And we want to make sure, or at least I do, that this is the best time they've ever had when they walk through the grave and leave the grave. And that's that's my that's my goal each and every time my people walk through the doors. Gee, well, let's go. <laughs>